Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I'm going to go around to a few areas in the yard that I would like to comment on because I'm going to be doing an upcoming July garden tour um, in the next few days but there's a few things that I would like to just point out and um, make note of today. So that's what this video is going to be about. So first off, we have had lots of rain all week long and that's why I didn't do a midweek posting because we have had rainy day every day all week long and have had quite a bit of rain. So our ground is very saturated and we do have standing water in the yard. What that does is it's just been kind of dreary, but it hasn't been too hot. Oops, I'm gonna come over here. I've got some blue jays coming in and wanting some peanuts there. So it's only been in the 80 degrees and the plants have really responded. I've been able to get most of my things completed after Hurricane Barrel came through. And so let's go over to the first area. So I think I mentioned in my post hurricane video that the vines here are doing just spectacular and they truly are. What I'm showing you here is the passion vine. And the passion vine has been flowering. The pollinators are loving the flowers. Let me zoom in. And as I have mentioned, the reason I like passion vine is because it is the host plant to the butterfly, the ghost, the Gulf fritillary. And this particular passion vine is a hybrid. Got lots of water all around. And this is a hybrid called incense. And it loves our weather. It loves the moisture. It loves the humidity. <laughs> Let me show you the ground. It's amazing how much standing water that I do have. But, you know, we were already waterlogged from the hurricane and it is lots and lots of rain that we have received. So needless to say, it's I think 94% humidity. It's pretty hot. <laughs> so the passion vine I wanted to comment on, and I also want to comment on right, right next to it, which is the Cardinal Climber. And this Cardinal Climber is gorgeous. I wanna scoot back. Last year's Cardinal Climber was not gorgeous. This one is beautiful. And it is flowering some. I've got a giant swallowtail there on the Tithonia that's trying to <laughs> trying to still flower. So there are a few blooms and right now what's happening is we're starting to get more hummingbirds. So I've got a couple of hummingbirds that are in the yard that are doing their aerial acrobatics and they are loving all of the flowers that we have in particular they're really going to the salvia, the kufia, and the porterweed. So it's like they're defending the area. Let me show you the back side of the salvia. I've been really pleased um, with how it is blooming. Oh, there is a pipe vine swallowtail, the black swallowtail. And 
I cut back the back side and just because of the hurricane damage. And so this front side has bloomed a little bit more. But in the back side, I did have more damage. And so I did cut back and I am starting to see growth. So that's good. Looks like I need to cut back even a little bit more. It looks like even more now is laying down against my my Mexican bush sage or the salvia lucantha so I'm not loving how the back side of this looks but it is responding and the pollinators are certainly frequenting all of the blooms that we do have that we do have here just have to get kind of a close-up here of this passion vine flower. Isn't that interesting? It's really amazing to me how many pollinating bees, how many different types of bees love this flower. Lots and lots I see on it all during the day. In the last video, I mentioned to you that the porter weed and really all the colors of the porter weed have been such a workhorse in the pollinator garden post hurricane. And that has been the case this whole time. Last summer, my porter weed stopped blooming for the summer because it was just too hot. And the porter weed has not stopped blooming, but we have not had high 90s temperatures either, which it will get. So we will have, our, our time is coming. I know that a lot of you in the U.S. have had really hot temperatures. Um, this year, this week we've had a reprieve and we haven't. My porter weed has not stopped blooming. Let me get on this side. And I'm very thankful for it because it has just been producing nectar. So I have red porter weed. I have blue volunteer porter weed here that is growing like crazy right next to it. And they self seeded in the ground. I did not pull them one because I wanted to see what the color was. But now I'm very happy that I didn't pull it because you know, it was a freebie and we're needing the, the freebies at the moment. My purple porterweed isn't blooming quite as much as the some of the other colors. So I'm not sure if it's because of the location that I have it in. I do think it has to do with the stem. So it had a forked stem and I shouldn't have bought that type because that has been an issue for me. I won't do that again. I will want to get one that has one stem growing up. And let me show you that. This is my pink porter weed that I purchased this year and was so happy to find. But let me show you the difference. Oh dear, look at this. My feet are just in the water. This is one stem coming up before it started branching. And that's the type of plant that I want. I think what happened to my purple porter weed is it actually split and it's split low. And I think it's been struggling ever since because all the other porter weeds in the yard have just been doing so well. So point to myself, right? Really look at the type of plant that I'm purchasing and try to get a very, and I do that, but I didn't really think that the that forked plant was going to be bad and it certainly has been problematic for me. So anyway, the porter weed has been a real stellar standout um, in the garden that I did want to share with you. So interestingly, 
my ground cover that got eaten to the ground is getting new eggs laid. This is the pipe vine swallowtail. At least I think it is. I need to see the wings open, but she's laying eggs. The, the wonderful thing about this particular pipe vine is it can get eaten to the ground again and again and again and it just keeps coming back. So it, it looks different because we've had to support our forsythia sage, also known as salvia madrensis. And so it does look a little bit different down under here, but the plants aren't missing a beat. And this female looks older. <laughs> She's not as vibrant in color. But yeah, that is a pipe vine swallowtail. There are a couple of other butterflies that do lay eggs on pipe vine. And I've not seen them in my yard, so I've only seen the pipe vine swallowtails but I'm still hoping for the others. One of the things that I do want to mention, and I have talked a lot about this ground cover, but they seem to prefer this over the Woolly Dutchman's pipe vine, and it absolutely could be where I have it planted. So it is being utilized. I have it growing up into my red tip tree. It's a climbing vine. This one, and, and that climbing vine is native. This one is not native to here, but it grows very well and it's very friendly in our environment. And the pipe vine swallowtail females prefer laying their eggs on this ground cover. And I love how it continually keeps coming back and it's very quick to come back. It is the white veined Dutchman's pipe vine or Aristolochia um, fimbriata. It's fun to see it come back this quickly. Well, I came over to show, I was so excited to see a couple of monarch caterpillars in my native in my um, native section of milkweed here and I was horrified because a stupid wasp got to one of them and was killing it and it successfully did that and that's one of the things that I absolutely dislike so I had a couple of monarch caterpillars here, and I did see some monarchs laying eggs um, a while back. So it's like, oh, saw them in the yard. It's like, oh, that's exciting. And of course, unfortunately, the wasps, they do predate the caterpillars <laughs> a lot. And that's just part of it, but you know, it's one of the things when you have a pollinator garden that I have to accept. And look at that. I don't know if you can see him combing through, but that wasp is looking for caterpillars. Look at that. Ugh. I don't like you, Mr. Wasp, at all. Get out of here. Go on, get. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a pretty big eastern black swallowtail caterpillar. The wasp has found it though. So when I go, I'm sure it will be back. The darn things. Aren't these little flowers really pretty on the milkweed? They're really starting to flower here. 
which is really pretty. Almost all of my vines I have been extremely happy with. And this that you see here is my Mexican flame vine. And Mexican flame vine is interesting to me because I do love how it looks. I love the blooms that it has on it. Last year during the summer, it did not bloom for me. And I wrote that off is our unusual summer with drought. And I don't know if you can hear me sloshing through the water. It's because we had the drought and the high, 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 high temperatures. But this summer, my Mexican flame vine has not flowered either. And we have not had a difficult, hot summer. Yes, we had the hurricane, but it's amazing how well all the vines came out and this didn't miss a beat. It just hasn't flowered. So this is two years in a row now that in the summertime, this Mexican flame vine has not flowered. And I would like to count on it flowering. So I'm curious for those of you that do grow it. I only have two years of experience with this. Do you find the same thing? Does it only in the in you know the, the south here, does it only flower for you in the spring and the fall? And then part through the winter until you know, until you've got a freeze, because I've been disappointed in that aspect of Mexican flame vine. And I don't really see any buds yet either. So if any of you, I know there's some of you that have grown it for longer periods of time, let me know what your experience with this vine is. It is very pretty. This is a brown anole. My dog loves to chase brown and green anoles. This is not native. The green anoles are native. I wish I didn't have that in the yard because they are aggressive towards the green anoles. Unfortunately, they are here. The one comment I would also like to make is I've been a little bit disappointed with my Turks cap this year. They've bloomed, but they've not bloomed beautifully. It's just been a, you know, I've had a, I've had some blooms here and there. They just have not, maybe they got too battered by the hurricane. Just been a little bit disappointed. And this is a native. I do see the pollinators at the few blooms that I do have every day. Wish I had more though. Well, thanks for joining me today. It was hard not being able to get out into the garden for a week. And that's why I haven't really posted anything either. It's just, it's been raining every day. Supposedly this week now we are going to have more sunny skies. So I do have some pollinators flying around. I've got a pipevine swallowtail. I think it's that. Maybe it's the eastern black swallowtail. I have to look inside. And then, oh, there's the green anole playing king of the hill on the pole. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to zoom in. And I hope you all have such a wonderful day. And I hope to see you again soon.